Okay, so you just took a test on machines and work, so the next logical step would be to go into energy. Um, because we said work is a form of energy, and so now we need to go a little bit more into it. Now, um, let's talk about, in particular, kinetic energy and potential energy, with the main idea, um, or the overall idea, is to talk about this question, which is, in what ways is energy transformed and used. We're going to more focus on the used and really more define it, if you will. Okay, So here we go. Um, what is energy? Now, the very first thing to think about is that it is the ability to do work. And you can think about this. This relates very well to real life. If you have a lot of energy, if you're an energetic person, you're able to do more than most people. That's not a physics definition, but it works. Um, Energy is the ability to work. In other words, if something has a lot of energy, if you remember, work is force times distance. That means that it can apply a lot of force over a large distance. Or, well, maybe not, but at least the more energy it has, either the more force it can apply or the further the distance it can apply it. Okay, um, A bowling ball dropping on the ground from this height, okay, will be able to do work on the ground. It might break the ground. Uh, but then again, it has more energy if it's held up higher, okay? So it can do more work on the ground down here. Um, that's just one way of looking at it, okay? Now, there are many forms of energy, okay? First of all, or actually not first of all, but one source is solar energy. Energy comes from the sun. Sunlight can do work. In fact, it does it all the time in plants. The sunlight does work by taking, um, if I can remember this correctly, it takes water and carbon dioxide and it uses the energy to combine them into a sugar. That's doing work. It's rearranging the molecule so it becomes sugar or other things and you have plants growing. Um, also, it can do work for solar panels as well and it turns into electricity. Uh, you could get energy from a nucleus, nuclear decay or a nuclear reactor. What it does is it produces, a, an atom splits and it uh, emits some energy and that energy turns uh, into heat in some water and the water heats up, it spins a turbine and it turns into electricity. Um, or you could just drop a big bomb on a city and spread energy that way. Um, there's also thermal energy, heat, okay? Um, the heat that your body produces, etc., etc. That's thermal uh, energy. There's chemical energy too. Whenever you see a chemical reaction, um, there's some work going on. Whenever you eat food and you break down the chemicals and you turn that into energy that you use for heat or for doing things, that's chemical energy. There's also mechanical energy, and that's really what we're going to focus on, okay, is mechanical energy, okay? And, um, but that could be like, let's say, wind. Wind is moving air. It's moving air, which then moves a turbine, which then creates electricity. Or water is mechanical movement. It's a physical movement of the water uh, that was once up high, and now it's coming down, and it's moving some turbines of some sort. Or you could have electrical energy, which I think you guys all know because you're using it right now to view this vodcast. So um, those are all types of energies. I don't even know if I got them all, but that's a lot of them. Okay? And the way that it's measured is in joules. And we know it's in joules uh, because that's kind of how we defined it. It's just like work. Remember, work was measured in joules? Well, that's because work is a form of energy. So you can actually calculate all of these in terms of joules. Okay? All right, now, what we're going to start focusing on, though, is this mechanical part, which breaks into two categories. You have what's called kinetic energy, or Ke, and you have potential energy, in particular, gravitational. Okay? We're going to focus on that in physics class, although you can talk about solar, all, all these other energies in physics class, but for right now, we're going to focus on the mechanical part. Okay. All right, so let's start with the first one, which is kinetic energy. All right. What is it? How do we define it? Well, since it's energy, it's the ability to do work. 
Okay? But the kinetic part comes from mechanical motion. Kinetic means mechanical motion. It's something that's moving. That's why over here you see that we called it the energy of motion. Some people might call it moving energy. If something is moving, it has kinetic energy. Okay? This pen has kinetic energy Okay, this entire time. It's got kinetic energy. This remote, it's got kinetic energy. Me, I've got kinetic energy. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. Okay. Now, what about the amount? If we assign a number to it, what does that number depend on? Well, the number depends on the mass and the velocity. Okay. In other words, the more massive something is, the more energy it has. Okay. A baseball thrown at 40 meters per second is going to have more energy than a golf ball thrown at 40 meters per second because a golf ball is lighter, has less mass. But if you throw that golf ball fast enough, okay, faster, f faster enough? Anyway, um, if you throw it fast enough, much faster than the baseball, you can get it so that the golf ball has more energy than the baseball by having it go much, much faster than the baseball. So, let me explain them. If we want to assign numbers to this, we have to use this equation, which is Ke, or kinetic energy, equals one-half mv squared. m is for the mass, velocity, or sorry, v is for velocity. Now, the operations here are super, super key, okay? If you remember your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the first thing that you're going to have to do is square the velocity. You have to square the velocity first, otherwise you'll come up with a different number. Like if, I don't know, let's say the mass was 10 and the velocity was, I don't know, let's say 5, okay? You could do 1 half of 10 times uh, 5 squared, okay, which would be, let's see, what's 5 squared? Oh, that's 25. 25 times 10 is 250. Half of 250 is 125 joules. But if you do it the wrong way and you don't square the velocity first and you do 1 half of 10 times 5, and then you square it. Let's see, 1 half of 10 is 5, okay? 5, okay, so that's 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, and then you do the squared. So what's 25 squared? Um, okay, I don't even know off the top of my head, but it's a really big number, I'm going to guess. Let's see, 20 times 20 would be 400. Uh, I'm just going to guess 600. Okay, so it's a big number. It's much bigger than this number. You're going to get different numbers, so don't do that. Always square the velocity first. So let me show you an example. Clear that out of there. Okay, example, a baseball. Well, wait, let's look at our problem-solving strategy. Okay, first we breathe, okay? But we do the givens first, okay? So let's look. We have a... If a baseball is thrown with a velocity of 40 meters per second, its mass is 0.145 kilograms. How much kinetic energy does it have? So our givens are first. It has a velocity of 40 meters per second. You know what? I'm going to draw a picture of this. Okay? Yeah, the baseball. Okay? I'm going to say it has a velocity of 40 meters per second, and its mass is 0 0.145 kilograms. Okay? So actually, I just drew a picture and wrote the givens all in one step, okay? So we have our givens. So we wrote down its mass and its velocity. We're looking for the Ke, okay? So what equation are we going to use? Well, this time it's simple. It's going to be this one. Ke equals 1 half mv squared. So I write down Ke equals 1 half mv squared, okay? So let's see. I did the givens. I did the unknown. I wrote down the equation. Um, now I got to substitute. Let's substitute. Okay, one half. Can the custodian please come to the front entrance and unlock the doors? Can the custodian please come to the front entrance and unlock the doors? Thank you. So one half stays one half. 
m is now, let's see, 0.145, okay? So 0 0.145 okay? kilograms. Okay? And the velocity is 40, but you square it in there, okay? Meters per second. Okay? So we do the 40 squared. Uh, let's see, I could use a calculator. Be right back. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 40 times 40, okay? All right, so I know that that is 1,600 right there. And what's 1 half of 0.145? So 0.145 divided by 2, and I get that that's 0.0725, okay? And I do a little math, and do, 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 whoops, answer times 1,600. And I get that this ball has an energy of 116, you remember, joules. 116 joules. All right, but you got to make sure you square that first. Don't forget to do that. All right, let's move on. The other uh, aspect of mechanical energy is potential energy. What is potential energy? Well, again, since it's energy, it's the ability to do work. But in this case, it's potential energy. And that means it's doing the work via energy that's stored in the object. Okay? Some people might say it's the energy of possibility of motion. Or it's stored energy. So what are some things that have this potential energy or this stored energy? Well, anything that's held above, held above the ground has potential energy. It has the potential to move from here to here and gain speed, so it has the potential to do work on the ground. Also, it's stretched rubber band. Okay? It has the ability to do work. Okay? Ow. See? It exerted a force over a distance on my finger. There we go. It And the second time, it took that potential energy that I put into it, and it moved. Or maybe a, cons a compressed spring. Okay? You squeeze a spring and then you let it go, whew, turns into kinetic energy. So that's what potential energy really is. So we're going to focus, though, on gravitational potential energy. And that's when you hold something above the ground. Okay? Now, the amount of gravitational potential energy something has depends on how massive it is. Because, come on, if you drop a bowling ball and a baseball, the bowling ball is going to do more work. It's going to have more impact. Also, gravity. If you hold a bowling ball above the ground on Earth, it's going to do some work. But above the moon, it's not going to do as much work because the moon has less gravity. Also, the height. Obviously, the higher you move it, the more gravitational potential energy it has. And so the equation we use is right here. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. It's actually pretty simple. Okay. The mass of the object times the gravity times the height. So the bigger any of these numbers are, the more potential energy it has. The more mass it has, the more gravity there is on whatever planet you're on, and the higher it is above the ground, that's the more potential energy it's going to have. Okay. Let's do an example real quick before I run out of time. Uh, the example is a bowling ball with a mass of 4 kilograms is being held 2 meters above a concrete floor. Wit, or sorry, how much potential energy does the bowling ball have? Well, we're talking about a mass of four kilograms. It's held two meters above a concrete floor. I like drawing some pictures, so here we go. There's a floor, not very flat. And let's see, we got a bowling ball. Okay. I'm going to write down that its mass is four kilograms. And this distance, we'll call it height, okay, is, what do we say, two meters. So the question is, how much potential? Whoops! How much potential energy does it have? All right. What equation are we going to use? Oh, I don't know. How about PE equals mgh? Okay. So let's substitute. M we know is four kilograms. G ah, uh, we already know this one. It's negative 9.8, or I'm going to round it for this one, negative 10 meters per second squared. What's h? That's 2 meters. Okay. 
So multiply those three together. Let's see, 4 times negative 10 is 40, times 2 is negative 80. So it has negative 80 joules of potential energy. Okay? The negatives aren't super important in this one, but I'll keep it that way for, uh, for clarity's sake. Okay? And uh, yeah, that's it for potential energy and kinetic energy. Uh, I'll see you in class with any questions.